The second theme of the course uh, deals with uh, sustainable development and uh, sustainability. And I will start with the discussion of the emergence of the sustainability problem. And uh, maybe before I start, it's also worth to note that, of course, sustainability is a much broader uh, societal challenge that, uh, that uh, it's not just a topic within uh, environmental economics, but there's also um, uh, natural sciences and engineering uh, are involved with the uh, sustainability. But also, of course, environmental and natural resource economics uh, has some uh, uh, perspectives to the sustainability. So it's it's good to be aware of the broader literature on, on sustainable development and sustainability. So I will start with the discussion of the um, uh, important re reports from the 1970s and 80s, considering the limits to growth and uh, and uh, definition of sustainable development and uh, and what does uh, sustainability actually mean and then um, operationalize it uh, through three uh, quite well accepted pillars of sustainability no if you think about the the um, emergence of this uh, uh, awareness of uh, of uh, sustainability then of course the um uh, awareness of the of the the many environmental problems started to emerge already in the in the 1960s uh, but uh, considering this uh, this uh, huge population growth as a source of the problem then then, then uh, there was this very influential uh, report that uh, that was prepared by the so called club of rome and, and very often it's still re, re, referred to as this Club of Rome uh, report, uh, drawing attention to the limits of growth. And um, it's good to mention that this kind of kind of limits to growth, that we no, noting that the amount of uh, agricultural land is uh, is limited, uh, and uh, agricultural output is limited. Uh, there is a very strong similarity to the to the argument by Thomas Malthus already in the in the 18th century and uh, and similarly also this uh, club of rome report uh, provided quite a quite a uh, dismal uh, prediction that we are heading towards a catastrophe and uh, maybe a new thing at that time in early 70s was that uh, that uh, the report was using the uh, Early computer simulation called called World Three, so so that's a, that's of course was was an uh, innovative approach at the, at that time, and the simulation gave really really uh, um, quite quite a uh, um, pessimistic view of of our our future, and especially of course this kind of prediction. Uh, depicted here on this slide uh, is uh, is uh, driven by the by the uh, limited amount of free natural resources that uh, that uh, that will run out in the in uh, in the uh, early twenty first century, and that would then cause the the agricultural output to collapse, and that lead to the to the to the sharp decrease in the population and and famine and war and and uh, and uh, so on. So the, indeed, this kind of prediction has very much um, uh, similarities to a similar prediction done by Thomas Malthus already, already um, almost uh, two hundred years earlier. So of course, this this uh, this report uh, uh, drew a lot of attention, a lot of a uh, lot of concern at that time. There were also some critics to this uh, to this study, uh, pointing out that uh, that. Um, uh, on on few things, for example, this uh, fact that uh, that um, that even though, of course, ultimately the the um, our resource base is is uh, limited and finite. However, there's also also market mechanism in play. So, for example, think about our our oil reserves. So so um, there is of course some some. Um, uh, oil reserves that are are being uh, uh, extracted at this moment, 
but then there exist also some known reserves that are too, currently too too prohibitively expensive to to extract. And then, of course, there are, there are also oil oil resources that we are not aware of yet. So as the as the technology is is developing, then then in some sense over time the extraction of oil and other other non renewable resources is becoming cheaper over time. Another thing is that as the as the resources become more limited in the market, uh, the price of oil and price of other resources increases, which makes then extraction of also such kind of reserves which which were not profitable enough in the past, they become profitable if the price of oil or other resources increases beyond certain certain threshold. So and this is why we haven't really seen such kind of dramatic drop in the non-renewable resources uh, even so far. So, so for example, when there have been uh, when there have been some some kind of uh, uh, large uh, hike in the oil price uh, uh, in the seventies, it was was because of the OPEC cartel. So it was just in some sense a political decision. Uh, recently, there have been, of course, like uh, like uh, price of oil has been reacted to for example to 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 wars like like the the uh, start of uh, war in ukraine as as russia invaded uh, uh, almost one year ago in in 2022 so so this kind of kind of uh, shocks of course can can also also increase the price of oil oil or other resources uh, temporarily but then typically then the markets will Will uh, respond and uh, and uh, and uh, eventually this uh, kind of can can dampen the effects of these kind of shocks. No, now of course there is uh, there is very very fast um, energy transition and and more broadly green transition going on, uh, where where the humankind is trying to uh, to um, replace this kind of non renewable such as oil and coal. And and find new new resources such as uh, we, we have solar panels and wind turbines are being being built very very fast. And this, of course, then then uh, then uh, uh, has caused a huge burden to the to the other type of resources such as the rare earth minerals. Uh, and um, and uh, the similar kind of problem that might might emerge also that anyway we are, we are have limited uh, resource pool. However, then there's other other reason that that, that uh, we have some some uh, more hope is that uh, that uh, also also technology is developing and uh, and uh, we find ways to use uh, other type of uh, materials for the for example to to store energy uh, by batteries um, also also the materials for solar panels are developing and improving as there is more research and development uh, going on. So this kind of kind of um, worries that uh, that our we are running out of resources that emerges uh, time and time again, but at least so far always always the innovation and technological development has managed to find uh, other other resources to to replace. And of course now the ultimate channel challenge is that uh, how to replace this kind of uh, resources to to more more renewable basis so so, so how to how to utilize the renewable resources um in in these technologies and and there is still of course a lot of concern so far these kind of technologies have not uh, uh, not uh, not developed and and then there is also trade off that if we use a lot of uh, uh, agricultural land to to cultivate um uh, resources for energy sector, for example, then then it is of course away from the food production. So therefore, then this productivity of the of the of this kind of cultivated agricultural land uh, uh, still needs to grow in the in the future to 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 manage this kind of uh, uh, sustainable transition. So this was indeed like very very um, influential and important. Uh, work to to raise concern about the our limits of the of the future but it also also met with some some uh, some resistance so then another important uh, work uh, 
is commonly referred to as the as the Brundtland Report. The official official name is is the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development, uh, but perhaps it's because of the ra rather long name. Uh, the report is often associated with the uh, with the uh, with the chairperson uh, who was Gruhal and Brundtland, the uh, uh, former prime minister of uh, of Norway. And in, especially why why this work is very often often. Uh, uh, still nowadays referred to and quoted is this uh, operational develop uh, operational definition of uh, sustainable development which is uh, given at the bottom of the slide so they this report defines sustainable development as development that seeks to meet the needs and aspirations of the present without compromising the ability to meet those of the future so uh, you might feel that this is uh, this is perhaps somewhat vague, but anyway, it was at that time it was at least something that uh, that could be could be rather commonly accepted uh, and uh, and understood as the, what is what is sustainable development. There is this uh, this uh, very much this kind of development uh, emphasis and this kind of forward looking looking emphasis, but at least it's good to, good to have some kind of kind of uh, operational development. What do we mean by by sustainable development. Of course, it's still at the relatively conceptual level and uh, and it's difficult to say you know, what exactly uh, is this kind of sustainable development. It leaves, leaves quite a lot of uh, room for interpretation. So therefore there have been then in the in the literature then uh, uh, more more detailed definitions and uh, for example in the ecological literature this um, um, a paper by Robert Costanza et al. in the early 90s uh, gives a much more, more detailed definition. So, so they write that uh, sustainability is the relationship between human economic systems and larger dynamic but, uh, but uh, slower changing ecological systems. Uh, and they have three conditions uh, for sustainability that human life can continue indefinitely human individuals can flourish and human cultures can develop so so this uh, this puts this kind of emphasis on the also on the cultural or social sustainability but then then at the at the bottom part of this uh, this definition uh, there is this kind of constraint that human activities remain within bounds uh, uh, so as not to destroy the diversity complexity and function of the ecological life support system so in their their definition, they, it's it's somewhat similar to this um, this uh, limits to to growth report that that, that this uh, ecological system uh, gives this boundary in which the which the uh, human economic system should uh, should remain. And uh, this is uh, this is uh, one of the one of this kind of uh, uh, suggested definitions of sustainability. But there, there exist uh, quite many others, and uh, here is the recent uh, description uh, from uh, Wikipedia. So, so, so uh, this uh, this uh, description states it a little bit more softly that uh, the sustainability as a social societal goal that uh, that uh, allows people to safely coexist on Earth over a long time. Of course, if you, if you think about the uh, uh, infinite future, then of course also the 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 um, uh, lifespan of of the of the planet Earth is also limited in in itself. So we we cannot really uh, coexist on Earth uh, uh, indefinitely, but uh, but uh, but anyway, at least over a long time. And this this uh, description of sustainability on Wikipedia also acknowledges that specific definitions of sustainability are difficult to agree on and have arrived with the literature context and time. So it's good to understand that that different uh, different people understand the notion of sustainability uh, somewhat different ways. And uh, I will discuss this also, also uh, somewhat, somewhat later. But uh, but what is rather commonly 
accepted is that there, there exist at least three dimensions or, or three pillars of sustainability. So, so sustainability should cover uh, environmental, economic, and, and social aspects. And uh, these pillars can be can be uh, also also illustrated in a in a in a different ways. So uh, some authors take literally these pillars as as like like some kind of uh, um, uh, antique uh, building. So there would be would be pillars of or that uh, that this is this kind of bottom right uh, figure where the sustainability rests on this on these three pillars namely social sustainability environmental sustainability and economic sustainability so in that that highlights that if, if one of the pillars fails then then uh, then the system is not really sustainable uh, some authors prefer to to uh, put this kind of kind of um, um, economic and societal sustainability within the broader broader so the environmental sustainability is kind of this outer 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 limits and then society is within this kind of environmental system and economy is within the societal system uh, to kind of highlight more the the importance of the of the environmental sustainability that uh, that uh, that um, then, then others prefer this kind of more like Venn diagram uh, representation that uh, that uh, where this kind of uh, uh, sustainable system should uh, should uh, should be within it should satisfy all this kind of criteria of environmental, social, and uh, and economic sustainability. So this kind of for a very long time this kind of. Uh, um, Academic research on sustainability also was on this kind of very, very uh, conceptual level. Uh, it is of course important to understand that what 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 do we mean by by sustainability? But uh, it gives very little guidance to, for example, operationally quantify or or use some kind of quantitative methods to to assess uh, sustainability. So in the Next video lesson, then I then I zoom more more focus to the to the notion of economic sustainability and discuss also that how the how in uh, economics uh, or in how the uh, environmental economics and ecological economics uh, have somewhat different views on this economic sustainability. Thanks for your attention and see you on the next video.